Hey guys, it's me, Crystal, from Marching North, and today I'm going to share with you five essential punch needle tips you need to know before you try it. I say that because when I first started out with punch needle, I made all the mistakes. I ended up with the wrong fabric, I had the wrong yarn, I had the wrong punch needle, the whole combo was wrong and it didn't work. And I was very frustrated and luckily I'm also very stubborn. I did a bunch of research, I found a lot of really great information, and then I got the correct punch needle supplies and it's now my most, you know, it's one of my favorite hobbies of all time. If you're new to punch needle, you're going to want to stick around for all five of these tips. I talk to people daily who are struggling with punch needle and trying to get started and having a hard time and 99% of the time these tips I'm about to give you will solve the problem. You'll find links for all the punch needle products that I recommend and love down below in the description. All right, let's get started. Tip number one, choose the correct punch needle. There are two main types of punch needle. There's the larger kind that work with yarn or wool strips, and then there's the smaller punch needles that work with embroidery floss or really fine yarns. The larger punch needles are sometimes called rug punch needles, and the smaller punch needles are, I always call them embroidery punch needles. Both types of punch needles are used in the same way, but the supplies for them are completely different. Now that we got that out of the way, which punch needles are best? Well, let me show you my personal favorites for both types of punch needle. For large rug punch needles, you can't beat the Oxfords. These are my two that I have right now. And this is the fine and this is the regular. And if you could notice that the, the needle part is larger on the regular. This works with bulky wool yarns and you can also use wool fabric strips or other kinds of fabric strips. You can use multiple strands of worsted weight yarn, like double it up or triple it up with this. And with the fine, it works best with one strand of worsted weight yarn or with a few strands of a thinner yarn. These punch needles work great. They have the added bonus of not needing a threader. As you can see, there's a slot there that you use to thread the yarn into them. And because of these awesome ergonomic handles, they're super comfortable for punching for an extended period of time. The downside to the Oxford punch needles is they're a little bit pricey and you'll have to buy multiple of them to get different stitch heights because they're not adjustable. However, you get what you pay for with them. It is really high quality. The Oxford punch needles are my current favorite choice for rug punch needles. Another option if you're looking for a large punch needle and you don't want to spend quite as much is one of these adjustable plastic punch needles. Um, these, mine is an SKC brand. I've also seen this exact same punch needle that says Lion brand on it. And I think there's another one. They're all exactly the same, but they have different brands. Um, this is, well, it's cheap. It's real cheap. Um, it's plastic. It has four different sizes, as you can see, which is handy for certain applications. And it does the job. I'm not going to say it's terrible, but it's definitely not anywhere near the Oxfords at all. But if you're just starting out, this is not a bad option. I mean, it works. <laughs> Sometimes whenever you're punching, the needle will slip in here, like it'll, you know, start moving on you. I'm trying to demonstrate, of course I won't do it when I'm trying to demonstrate it, but you know, it'll just kind of like start, it'll come out of its slot and start sliding around on you, which is very frustrating. And also this, this metal is very cheap and it doesn't really glide through the fabric super well. Sometimes it kind of gets stuck. Um, also, it doesn't hold as quite as bulky of yarn as the Oxford regular does. It's a little bit narrower of a slot. And of course you'll need a threader for this, which isn't that big of a deal because you need a threader for most punch needles. But I don't know, it does the job. It's not terrible. If you're looking to save money and you want to get started and you don't want to, you know, you're not looking to invest a lot of money, this will do the job, but just be forewarned that it's not the best. So don't let it like put you off of punching altogether because you hate this punch needle. So that's another option. As for embroidery punch needles, the hands down favorite of mine and pretty much everyone is the Ultra Punch. Everybody loves the Ultra Punch. It has 12 different loop heights, 
Unfortunately, mine does not go in the 12th loop height for some reason. I don't know. I just probably got lucky on that one, but it goes on every other one and it's not really that big of a deal. It comes with three different needle sizes that are interchangeable. It works with embroidery floss. It works with pearl cotton. You can even use really, really fine yarn um, with the largest needle. It's a great punch needle. It works really well. The needle doesn't slip. It, it's just, it's a great all around punch needle. It has a nice sharp, points, which is nice. It goes to the fabric really well. I love this punch needle for doing um, just regular punch needle with embroidery floss and also doing embroidery style stitches with a punch needle. This is a great option. It's super easy to adjust your loop heights, which is really nice. This is my definite favorite for embroidery punch needles. Another option that you can use for embroidery punch needles is the Lavore punch needle. This is let me see if you can see that, it says Lavore. Um, this is an adjustable small embroidery punch needle. Um, it's not as foolproof as the Ultra Punch at all because you have to use this little dial to adjust your, your loop heights, which can be, you know, you kind of have to play with it and it only can go to like that long <laughs> and then you can make it a lot shorter. Um, so it has its limitations. It is less expensive. It also comes with three different needle sizes, but the needle sizes for the Lavore are a little bit bigger than the needle sizes for the Ultra Punch, I've found. Um, so it can handle a slightly larger yarn with the large punch, the largest needle, but it's still not going to be like a worsted weight or anything like that. Probably like a sock weight or a, you know, baby weight or sport weight yarn would work with that. It's not a bad punch needle. I don't hate it. I've heard some people like it. Some people hate it. The one thing about this punch needle that I like is that it's a little bit blunter of a needle, um, which I don't really like for myself so much, but I let my kids use this punch needle. Um, I don't really want them to use my ultra punch because I don't want them to stab themselves and I don't want them to break it. Um, and you know how kids are. But like my daughter likes to try punch needling every once in a while. So I give her the Lavore and I've shown her how to use it and she does just fine with it and I don't have to worry about her stabbing herself in the leg, which is a plus. Tip number two, choose the right fabric. There are a few different fabrics you can use for punch needle. Um, today I'm just gonna stick to two to keep it simple because it can get really confusing really fast. If you're using a large punch needle, your best bet is monk's cloth. Now, that being said, there are two kinds of monk's cloth out there and one of them is the wrong kind. And this is such a big issue. So many people get confused by this, understandably. The kind that is the correct kind of monk's cloth, and I have some right here, you'll see it has these lines running through it every two inches. This is the right monk's cloth. There is another kind of monk's cloth, which I don't have any because I don't need it because it's the wrong kind of monk's cloth. Um, and it doesn't have the lines, it's just one color. And it kind of looks a little bit more like Ada cloth, like you'd use for cross stitch. What it's actually sub intended to be used for is um, Swedish weaving or huck embroidery. And I'm sure it has other uses too, but um, you'll commonly see the wrong one, the one I'm talking about, sold in like Joann's or Michael's or, you know, the craft stores. And the people working there will be like, oh yeah, we have Mux cloth, it's right here. Because, you know, they don't know the difference unless they're punch needlers, and then they would. It's not going to work as well for punch needle. It does not work quite. I mean, it, it can work, but it's going to not work well. <laughs> Your stitches aren't going to stay in right. It causes all kinds of problems. Unfortunately, I have found that a lot of people have been buying punch needle kits that have this wrong monk's cloth in it. And it's like really a big issue. Like I, I'm constantly seeing people saying, I bought this punch needle kit and I can't get it to work and I don't understand what's wrong. And They'll show a picture of it and I'll be like, yeah, it's the wrong fabric. Why? Why did they do this to us? That is a rant for another day. I have only found the right kind of monk's cloth online. Personally, I haven't, there's no shops where I live that sell it. There are some specialty shops out there that specialize in punch needle embroidery that will have the, the correct kind of monk's cloth. I'm putting a link in the description down below to my favorite place to buy monk's cloth. For punch needle embroidery using a small punch needle, your absolute best bet is weaver's cloth. Weaver's cloth is a poly cotton blend fabric that is just perfect for punch needle embroidery and really any kind of embroidery. 
I have a whole bolt of it right here. And I don't know if you can really see that very well. I'll put a link below to my favorite place to buy it. You can also buy it on Amazon, buy the bolts as I did. I'm not sure if that's available right now. It's a great fabric. You can sew it easily with a sewing machine after you're finished punching. You can turn your punch needle creation into whatever. You can do that with monk's cloth as well. That fabric is going to be your best friend when it comes to punch needle embroidery. No frustration, it works. All that being said, I want to say most importantly, you cannot interchange those fabrics. You cannot use weaver's cloth with a rug punch needle, and you cannot use monk's cloth with an embroidery punch needle. It's not going to work. The holes are too big in monk's cloth for punch needle embroidery. It's just going to slip right through. And weaver's cloth, if you try to punch it with a big Oxford punch needle, you're just going to leave big holes in it. I know this because it's exactly what I did when I first started and it was very upsetting <laughs> at first. Remember, monk's cloth works with large punch needles and weaver's cloth works with small punch needles. And if you just remember that, you'll be good. Tip number three choose the right yarn or thread. You can do punch needle with any yarn or thread that will flow freely through your punch needle. You can use fabric if it'll work, fabric strips, you can use wool strips, you can use bulky yarn, you can double up um, worsted weight yarn, really anything. The sky's the limit. There's no right or wrong yarn. You can use acrylic yarn, wool yarn, alpaca yarn, uh, cotton yarn, I really like. Um, lots of, there's, you know, any kind of yarn, as long as it's not something that's going to get stuck in your punch needle, will work just fine. Bulky wool yarn is commonly used for, say, making punch needle rugs or anything that's going to get any abuse, like a rug, obviously, because it's going to be walked on all the time. Um, anything that needs to stand the test of time or that you want to have as like an heirloom in your family, I would definitely stick with a wool yarn if you're using the large punch needles. Um, you can buy a bulky wool yarn online that's specially, you know, that's really made for rugs. I have a link below to some of my favorites. Um, that stuff is not going to steer you wrong. For me personally, I love using the wool, but I'm a little bit allergic to wool. So whenever I make, say, like a pillow or something, and I have actually made a punch needle pillow with wool yarn, which is beautiful, but I can't touch it with my face or I break out. If you want to make something that's going to stand the test of time, wool yarn is your best bet with the large punch needles. Now that being said, if you're like me and you have a massive stash of cheap acrylic yarn that you've amassed over the years because you do every yarn hobby there is known to man, then you can use those too. It'll totally work. I probably would use those more for something decorative or like a wall hanging. Uh, that's what I use mine for. Something that's not going to get a lot of abuse because that yarn's just not going to stand up as well as a heavy duty wool type of yarn would. They're totally usable. You just might have to double them up in your punch needle. As for punch needle embroidery floss options, um, my personal favorite is just good old DMC six strand cotton embroidery floss. You can also get pearl cotton, which is like a twisted um, embroidery floss that doesn't doesn't separate into strands like six strand embroidery floss does. Uh, DMC has a version of that and it's also very nice. You can use that with your ultra punch or your Lavore punch needle or any other small punch needle. Another very popular pick amongst punch needlers is Valdani floss. Uh, it comes in a very wide range of colors. They have some gorgeous variegated floss options out there and with primitive punch needlers they seem to really love Valdani floss and it's obvious why. It's great quality, it's going to stand the test of time, and it's going to look beautiful. Tip number four, choose the correct embroidery hoop or frame. This is so important with punch needle. You need your fabric to be drum tight, like bounce a quarter off it tight. If it isn't, you're going to have issues. Your loops will be uneven, your stitches will come out, things aren't going to work right. It's crucial to have either an embroidery hoop with a locking lip or a gripper frame works amazingly or something like that. With a regular embroidery hoop, just the regular standard embroidery hoop, your fabric is going to slip out. It's not going to stay tight. Every time you go to punch, it's going to loosen it a little bit because of the pressure because it does apply some pressure when you're punching. It's going to drive you crazy. Luckily, there are special kinds of hoops for this. My personal favorite is the Morgan No Slip Hoops. This is one here. This is 
how the top looks. It has this super heavy duty hardware to hold it. You can kind of see there's this ridge here and then underneath there is a channel and it's like a little lip that goes through and it locks the fabric into the hoop and it will actually hold the fabric tight. Now with a Morgan no slip hoop, it does slip a little, a little teeny bit. You might have to tighten it every once in a while, but it's not even comparable to using a regular embroidery hoop. It's, it's so much better. Um, they come in lots of different sizes. I have another large one here, but it's covered in yarn right now, so I'm not gonna show you. Um, it comes in different sizes. They even have a lap stand version where you has two hoops and a little stand and you can put that on your lap so you're not poking yourself on the leg. Um, they're great for on the go because, you know, they're just real easy to get a hoop and just stick it in your bag and, and they do the job. They work really, really well. Another option that lots of people use, I also have one, is a gripper frame. This is my gripper frame here. I don't know if you've seen my tutorial showing how to make it. You might be familiar with this and um, you can also buy them online. Uh, they are a little bit more pricey when you buy them online, but they're really good quality. They're gonna last forever. You can also buy uh, spinner frames online that are like gripper frames that are on a spinning mechanism and you can just spin it around. And it makes it real easy for, you know, punching all the sides if you're making something big. Uh, they come in all different sizes, but like I said, they're a little pricier. And if you're like me and kind of frugal, you can always DIY your own punch needle gripper frame. And I will include a link to the tutorial in the description below, and it's probably also floating in a little box above my head right now. Tip number five, start off simple and have fun. The best way to learn punch needle is just to do punch needle. There's no better way than just diving in head first and giving it a try. If you have a design in mind that you wanna make, you can easily just freehand it. If you're good at, if you have any drawing skills, you can just draw it on your fabric and punch to your heart's content. Pretty much any simple line art can be used as a punch needle pattern. Even coloring pages can be used as a punch needle pattern. You can also grab some free patterns on my site. I have some great free punch needle patterns available for subscribers to my blog, and I'll include a link to those down below in the description. So if you've gone through all these tips and you're still feeling a little unsure about what supplies you need to get, a great option is a punch needle kit. You can find a kit that has everything you need, a punch needle, fabric, fibers, a pattern, the whole thing. That being said, like I mentioned before, there are some out there that are kind of not the best. There are some out there that come with the wrong fabric. They come with really cheap punch needles that don't work right. Lots of problems. But there are also some really great ones out there done by people who actually really care about punch needle. I have a list of 13 of my personal favorite punch needle kits, and you'll find a link to that post down below. It's a whole blog post and it links to all of them, and they're good quality and they won't steer you wrong. I hope these five essential punch needle tips will help you in your punch needle journey. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more crafty tutorials and DIYs. Thanks for watching!